Hey everybody, joelimportsauce.com. Today we are going to show you uh, not only the ignition uh, removal and swap, but because this on uh, early P3 models is um, a programmed uh, part at the dealer, I'm gonna show you how we were able to swip, switch over uh, all the gears and motor from a good donor one and use the circuit board from the existing so that instead of paying $500 to the dealer, we got out of the junkyard for 17 bucks and everything works great. Stick around. Okay, so on these early uh, P3 models, uh, similar to uh, the P1 models of this era, um, you know, S40s and C30s and things like that, um, key shape is different, right? This is the newer key style, but uh, on those, you have to actually stick the key in, turn it, and then it will lock in place, and the ignition switch will read the data off of the key. On the later P3 models, such as that XC60 over there, it has a spot, but right here on the door, it says keyless. So you can stick it in there and it's just a key holder, but essentially just leave your keys in your pocket or in your purse, whatever you're doing, right? And this is kind of the in between the transitional when they kind of were making their way up to that. This is a 2008. Um, and you actually have to stick the key in and there are little uh, arms in there that will grab the notches on here and pull the key all the way in and kind of hold it there. So when we got this a couple weeks ago or about a month ago, we noticed that it was making some weird noises in there. So I'll just kind of show you, right? Uh, push that and then you push it a little and it's gonna try to grab it and pull it in. And you see it doesn't. And you hear that grinding and uh, sometimes it gets stuck. So just based on those sounds, I knew that something was, you know, gonna be needing attention at some point soon. So we went down to the junkyard this morning and there was a uh, same model year of uh, this V70 in there. And we went ahead and got this. If you were to buy this new um, genuine Volvo, I think I saw it on uh, Auto Haas. Uh, it was about 270 and then shipping and tax. So you're almost 300 bucks, right? Uh, I got this guy for 17 bones. Um, and with the warranty for five bucks extra at the junkyard, you're at 22 bucks. And if it doesn't work, you can take it back. So at least you're not out anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, show you how to get this thing out. It is uh, not as bad as it looks. Initially, I thought, oh, we're gonna have to pull this whole trim piece and all that. We're actually just gonna uh, remove a cover, uh, pop the uh, gauge cluster out, which is super easy on this car. And then uh, from behind there, uh, you're gonna see, uh, if we look at the back, we have three holes, uh, one, two, and three, and those are just uh, really long. Um, I think it was a uh, eight millimeter. So uh, we'll walk you through that. First step is we want to um, go ahead and uh, get this trim piece off. And that guy is uh, gonna snap out. Next, we are gonna have a couple um, T25s, two that you see there. And um, once we uh, pull this panel out, there'll be two more there. So we'll go ahead and do that and then bring you back in. Okay, so the trick with this panel is you're not pushing up, you're actually grabbing and sliding out. Uh, keep in mind that the rubber that attaches to the steering wheel, let's call it the uh, the crumb guard or whatever, uh, is attached. So some people will pry uh, and just pop this uh, top steering column piece off so that you can get some more play. Um, I see access to the screw, so I'm going to skip that step and I'm gonna get the four torques out and pull the gauge cluster. The one at the junkyard had a pretty long cable. I didn't even have to disconnect. I was able to pull it out and just kind of set it to the side. All four bolts are out. Instead of trying to go down and bend under, actually, if you come here and just kind of pull up, you got direct access in there. This gauge cluster is uh, pretty much uh, seamless. So the trick that I found is you just stick your hole your finger in the hole where the screw is and you just kind of pull out. And look at that, we're gonna set that aside and then take a look at the last thing we have to do. 
Okay, so we have that out and you can see how long that cord is. You just let that dangle there. I mean, if you're gonna be in there for a while, you can unhook it, but uh, it'll be all right. Okay, so the last thing is the ignition is, uh, you know, kind of hiding behind there, is this air vent right here is going to block you being able to get your socket in there. So right here, uh, you have a screw and you can remove that and then this whole thing will uh, come out and then you'll have access to get your ratchet in there. So we're gonna pull that uh, screw out and then just uh, pop that air vent out of the way. Okay, so you can see we got that vent out. It was the same torque bit and exactly the same screw. What we use is this little ratcheting guy so that we could get that upside down angle. And next, we're going to mount up our ratchet and our eight mil. And essentially, uh, I'll show you what that looks like, but we're gonna pull the three screws out. Okay, so here's my perfect setup. We got my ratchet, eight millimeter, and uh, you know, two, three inch extension. We'll put you there. And with that vent out of the way, you got plenty of room. You can stick your finger back there and find those. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is, uh, you can't see it, but I'm just gonna unhook the wiring from it. Um, what I do may do uh, actually right now is uh, plug the, uh, the new one in right here before we even rip this out. Make sure that we're not gonna install uh, something with a similar problem. Uh, electrical, nothing is unhooked, so it should fire up. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so testing before we rip the old one out, we have the new one here and we have success and failure at the same time. So first thing we're gonna do is I'll just show you the motor that we have, right? How nice and smooth this thing is. Put it in. And then it pushes it back out. So the motor and the gears in there definitely work better than that one, which is But we have an error, which is key error, reinsert key, right? So I did that a couple of times. It doesn't want it. So uh, I was hoping, similar to the P1 model, uh, you could, um, it's just the ignition switch that reads it, but I called Volvo and they said, this part is $305, they have it on the shelf, and then uh, service department needs to program it 205 or 10 bucks. So, you know, if you go through the dealer, you are at, uh, 500, but we have uh, three other options that we're gonna push forward. So, I mean, one option is we pull that out and we open and crack both these open and try to see if we can move the, uh, the motor that just pulls the key in without uh, the actual circuit board or anything that would uh, recognize um, the key and just try to swap those parts. Uh, that's one option. But before we start cracking open parts, uh, we're going to both try our V dash, which says it can program keys. Um, and then also we'll try uh, our older uh, Vita, uh, you know, the Vita that we're talking about. So we'll try both of those and then we'll let you know uh, if we get that going. Okay, so while uh, my laptop is charging, I didn't want to start any processes. The uh, battery was getting low in the car. I'm just going to open this guy up and see what it looks like. This is the junkyard one uh, and see what it looks like. Okay, so all the way down the side, you have these tabs. One, two, three, four. Pop that and I slid the back unit off. And it looks like the only thing holding the front on is this uh, four wire harness there. And that's just that little white guy there. So I'm going to pop that slide the front off okay so everything is off and it looks like uh obviously the uh board up here is what's uh, gonna save the information for the key right it's programmed into this guy but down below we can see our gears there and that is what uh watch this uh, right so that's what swivels there um so that motor those gears back there powered by this guy and that will uh pull it in and then once it reads it it said hey this is the wrong key and then that's what spit it back out rather than keeping it in the um in locked position so we're going to crack this open and see if we see anything going on with our gears and then maybe we can uh open up uh this bottom panel and kind of swap gears while keeping this um, on there or, uh, you know, cause if not, 
these coils are soldered in. We, I mean, it's doable. We could unsolder one, two, and three, four. So, I mean, that's an option too. Um, so we'll see uh, the path of least resistance. Okay, so on the donor, uh, first thing we did was we kind of popped this off and that door comes off and here are our gears. So uh, that's a good one. We're gonna do the same over here and see if we got a bad one. Um, I'm guessing it's gears and not the actual, uh, not the actual motor there, but um, that's just two screws as well. So you know what, I think we can probably swap the guns. Okay, so we've pulled the gears off of the ignition, both of them, they both look to be intact. Everything on both of these seems to function. So my guess is it is this little motor that spins that little guy is making that because those are the moving parts, right? So uh, it's not too bad, right? That is just screwed in with two screws. And uh, you can probably kind of pry this and squeeze that out. Well, actually it doesn't have to go far. It's, uh, maybe it's just that gear. We're gonna take a look and see. And then um, swapping it and then just Resoldering uh, two connections, I think will get us there. So we'll get some lunch and uh, we'll see. Okay, so we have removed these two tiny guys. You can see it is now empty. And if we push down on the gear, we can see, boop, boop, that guy comes right out. So what we're gonna do is kind of pop that out. And then our uh, irons warming up here and our uh rosin and we will uh break those two joints and then uh do the same here and swap those motors okay so we push that guy out he's just kind of sitting there i think actually what we'll do is we'll uh remove the connections on the actual motor so that we're not messing with the circuit board just so that we don't you know put any heat on this thing that we don't need to um and uh yeah just uh suck that off and it looks like there's probably a hole that the wire goes through so just pull that solder off and then pull the wire out and uh we'll be good to go and just uh, do the same thing okay so we uh went ahead since this is the donor we went ahead and just cut those wires so that we could work on this uh, motor by itself and you can see we have the leads off uh volvo is good that little red dot keep in mind that is going to be your red wire, so you can't really get it uh, mixed up there. So you can see on there it has the red. So what we're gonna do now is pull this motor off and uh, just uh, put this one in its place with some fresh solder and uh, fire it up. Okay, so donor, donor motor, other motor is out. What we're gonna do is take our wire snips and just pull a smidge off of these. Just about the same amount that you see uh, that went through there. You know, just a, a little smidge on that. Um, and then we are going to drop uh, some fresh with our solder and iron, solder on there to put it back together. And then we're gonna reassemble in reverse order and uh, see what happens. Okay, so we have our fresh uh, solder on there. We've done the tug test and uh, those things are, are on there. So uh, we're gonna flip this motor back in, screw it back down with those two little guys, put our uh, gears back on, put our gear door back on, and then enclose it all in uh, the housing and uh, go give it a shot. Okay, every guy is back together. Donor's still over there, all these extra parts. Let's go ahead and plug it in and uh, see, right? So now we have the new gears and motor, the original factory encoded circuit board, and uh, let's hope for the best. Okay, so here's the test, right? Remember that old one? Right? Before we install it, you know, obviously we'll test it out here and just kind of sucks it in. No air message down there. Foot on the brake. OK, 
Okay. Looks like uh, 20 or uh, what were we at? 22 bucks with our uh, $17 and $5 warranty. And uh, just opening the box up and uh, desoldering and resoldering two connections. Saved herself 500 bucks. So, uh, so it wasn't that difficult. So before you go out and buy the part for 300 and pay Volvo over 200 to program it, see if you can just source a used one, um, you know, on eBay or the junkyard. Uh, if you're having that uh, issue with the gears, you know, I would assume it's only a matter of time. Probably happens on a lot of these. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll put the other one back together and uh, just throw it up in my box in case, you know, maybe we need parts or this one fails. At least I'll have, a, you know, um, other gears or motor, you know, whatever I may need. So, okay, well, we're going to put it back together and uh, hopefully that helps you guys out.